Dr. August Oliveira with Digital Enamel, and I am excited about uh, being here at the Asiga booth. We have a new DLP printer that's going to be distributed in the States under the Whip Mix label. So I'm here with Stefan. How are you doing, Stefan? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks. So, Stefan, tell me a little bit about this uh, machine. So, what got me excited about it is the price point. So, it's supposed to be released in the U.S. for fourteen thousand. That's one four, and this is a DLP printer with sixty-two micron accuracy uh, in the X Y axis. Is that correct? <clears throat> More or less. So, we're using a projector with a pixel size of 62 microns to achieve a, a build size which fits actually enough models and uh, everything else of the applications you want to do. Yeah. So, uh, tell me a little uh, bit uh, about accuracy in DLP printers. So, I said 62 microns, but you have a different term. Tell me about that. Yeah. So. On the data sheet, you will see 62 microns, and that's just like you have a full HD pr um, projector which has 1,920 pixels, right? You know it from your screen, and uh, yeah, if you if you um, have, a, have a certain build envelope, you just divide it by that uh, number, and you get a pixel size. Okay. But uh, not every projector can do that. Like uh, you need a you need a very good projector and a good optics to actually have a correct image. So. You know, just just because your your chip has a certain resolution, if you if you have an optics which actually skews it and you get a you get a distorted image, then you can have the highest resolution. The number of pixels your your parts will not be accurate. And um, even if you have a, a correct imaging, you still need to know what you're doing. You need to know how you form your layers. You need to know how you separate. You need to know how you support. And you need to know how the material is working. Like there will be shrinkage, there will be deformation, there will be influences by heat. So we can control all the chamber, we can control everything of the mechanism, how we form the layer, how we separate it, and that actually separates this machine from some other machines who are just like estimating and just giving it, it a go, right? Let me just interject for the crowd. So what he's talking about are two things that are really big in 3D printing. One is how the material is cured. So a DLP printer cures layer by layer by actually having a DLP projector like you would see in uh, the newer TVs and things like that. So he talked about separating layers. So tell me a little bit about that process. So the build platform comes down, cures a layer, and it has to lift off. And so that's where um, you can get failed prints by things not separating. It's not about not only about failed prints, but also if you go down to the build platform and we have a viscous liquid, it's not like water, right? It's it's having a resistance. So you're going down and you need to push out the liquid out of a gap, which a gap, a really small one. We're talking 50 microns 100 microns right and if you if you do that and if you're a little bit like you can you can actually google all the laws which are involved in this it becomes harder to squeeze out something uh, the smaller you get so you need to control that process you can wait forever then you might have a controlled process or you can just like have some smart systems inside which actually detect when you reach the correct layer and then you form a correct layer without materials still flowing while you're exposing and actually nobody seems to notice that you have to actually take care of this I mean it's obvious that you have to care about separating because you hear a nice plop if, if you separate or the stuff sticks there. But there's a little bit more to DLP than just like, yeah. Um, again, we're looking at the uh, a Sega Max. You want to see something cool? I do want to see something cool. Let's see oh, something cool. She's so smart. We, have a, we do have an intelligent position system, or we, we call it smart positioning system. So this glass plate is not only a glass plate, but uh, we, we, we use position encoders to actually know what we're doing. So, so is this a self-leveling machine? This, where I touch on the glass, and you see it's like a touchpad. Oh yeah. So it's decalibrated right now because we are playing around with it. Oh my god. But you see, it's actually noticing what I'm doing. So this so, is the Z calibration, correct? No, this is actually knowing where the platform is, when we squeezed out material, when we separated. It, 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 even, it even can tell you some more things, like when you need recalibration, when you need to fill up your material, when you actually, like we can increase speeds of this. We just started playing with this, right? But we know so much about our process, or we monitor so much, that we can just, you know, we can, we can increase speeds of this too. 
Ugly a lot more. That's awesome. So, so one drawback of a lot of 3D printers is if it's not level, it's not going to print. You're going to have a failed print. So this machine is smart. It knows exactly where this build platform is relative to the VAT. And so as a result, it'll tell you when you need to calibrate. Um, in machines, basically, if the machine is uncalibrated, you're going to wait for your print. Your print may take hours if we're doing a form labs printer, and it will tell you when you need to calibrate it. You're actually talking about producing medical products with this, like like splints, yes. temporaries, stuff like this. It's a medical product. You're putting it in the mouth of a patient, right? Yes. You need to make sure that you get certain strengths, full curing, accurate, accurate things. Like it's a therapeutical instrument. If you have a wrong wrongly placed crown, right? You get headaches, you get yeah. all kinds of infections. So better make sure you have an accurate yeah, yeah, like system. accurate, accurate. So, so again, this is this is a smart machine. It's going to be very accurate. So, Stefan, thank you so much for your time. Thank nice you. to see you.